So what's up guys, so welcome back again, this is now your boy Adam Slink, how you guys doing, welcome to another crazy video, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you guys are watching this video from, I hope you guys are very much doing okay. So uh, let's discuss a little bit on politics, and uh, the Nigerian next president, the president-elect, that is uh, the person of Ebola, Ahmed Tunubu, he is 71 years old today, he was supposed to celebrate his birthday today, but... According to his close associate and uh, media representative, they said he's going to postpone it. In fact, he said he's not going to celebrate his birthday. And according to the headline, they said, President elect Bola Amin Tunubu cancel annual birthday event. And uh, he decided to do national prayers on his 71 birthday. He said, No party. I don't want any party. We do not need any party now as Nigerians. We do not need to be celebrating my birthday. What we need is national prayer. National prayer. You know, it's our president-elect. and uh, It's our president-elect until the court says otherwise. It's our president-elect. And he said no prayer. Well, his uh, date of birth has been an issue for a long time now. Hmm? Apparently, this is the eldest daughter of uh, Bola Ahmed Tunubu. Apparently, this girl, God said, Bola Ahmed is celebrating his 71th birthday, but his biological daughter is celebrating her 61st birthday. Everything about Tunubu is, okay, I don't want to mention some certain things. He said, Bola Ahmed Tunubu's daughter is celebrating her 61st birthday. And meanwhile, Bola Ahmed Tunubu is celebrating his 71 birthday. That means at the age of 11, Bola Ahmed Tunubu had his, uh, his first child. It's quite possible, though. <laughs> but I'm still going to do more research and uh, to check this Bola Ahmed Tunubu first daughter. Let me actually check the real age, you know, before I can uh, make a video about it. I am just talking about it, not in any way having an opinion about it. So there is a difference between having an opinion about it and uh, just talking about it. No, I'm not saying this is true or false. But I'm most definitely going to do my research on uh, this woman and uh, to know her exact age. So guys, uh, meanwhile, you know, Ghanaians are making fun of Nigeria currently. You know, the United States of America vice president, she's currently in Ghana and the liaison with Ghana. And after Ghana, she's going to visit either Zimbabwe or Tanzania. No Afri no, no Nigeria, no uh, South Africa, the biggest uh, nation in the Africa. No Egypt and uh, no many other places. Just three countries, Ghana, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe and Tanzania. Well, and guess what? They mentioned LGBTQ. LGBTQ, right? You know where where everybody the United States of America is going, they must bring in LGBTQ. The only place that the United States of America will ever go and not discuss about LGBTQ is uh the Arab nations, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and all those places. They will never mention lgbtq rights over there because they do not have such power over those people but in africa they are free to say that whenever they wish to and they might able to sanction you if you do not agree with their view when it comes to lgbtq i am not in a way dancing on anybody's intelligence and i'm not saying lgbtq to help no 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 i'm not okay let me know what let me just forget about that discussion before it gets me into trouble well according to uh this guy bino making fun of our president our president-elect and uh celebrating 71 years birthday and you guys are making fun of our president-elect the person said our president versus their president quality of food they both eat how did millions of nigeria get up from their home and decided this man has to be president. They say, how did millions of Nigerians 
get up from their home and decided this man has to be president. <laughs> well, someone responded to them and said, because they don't have light. So they could not see who they voted for. You saw that they mock us, Niger. You see how this Ghanaian counterpart they mock us. He said, because we know they we know get light. And because we don't get light, we know actually they see who we they vote for. Kai. Insult of the century. And we heard that people are protesting currently on behalf of the president elect. They are demanding people to send their congratulatory messages. They are demanding people to send their messages ASAP. That is not constitution. Um it's, it's unconstitutional for anyone not to congratulate the president-elect that is bringing doubt into people's mind. Abba. You guys are the... You guys voted for Bola Ametutubu. He's the president-elect. And yet, you guys are still demanding for other things. Abba. <laughs> Well, 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 well. Meanwhile, talking about the LGBTQ, I want to play you an interview between the Vice President of the United States of America and uh, the Ghana President. Somebody asked them about the LGBTQ, right? And they checked their response. Honestly, the response from the Ghana President, beautiful. I honestly love what he said. So sharp and straightforward. Let me be clear about where we stand. First of all, for the American press who are here, you know that a great deal of, of work in my career has been to address human rights issues, equality issues across the board, including as it relates to the LGBT community. And I feel very strongly about the importance of supporting uh, the, the, the freedom and, and supporting and fighting for equality among all people and that all people be treated equally. I will also say that uh, this is an issue that we consider and I consider to be a human rights issue and that will not change. Um, yes, what's the name? Kano Young, so the New York Times. Zonan. Mr. Young, so thank you for the question. First of all, we don't have any such legislation here in Ghana. A bill has been proposed to the Parliament of Ghana which has all kinds of ramifications, which is now being considered by the parliament. It hasn't been passed. So the statement that there is legislation in Ghana to that effect is not accurate. No legislation. The bill is going through the parliament. It's going through the parliament. The attorney general has found it necessary to speak to the committee about it regarding the constitutionality or otherwise of several of its provisions, and the parliament is dealing with it. At the end of the process, I will come in. But in the, in the meantime, the parliament is dealing with it. And I have no doubt that the parliament of Ghana will show, as it has done in the past, one, first of all, its sensitivity to human rights issues, as well as to the feelings of our population, and will come out with a responsible response to the, to, to the proposed. The legislation was a legislation that has been provided provi as a private member's bill. This is not an official legislation of the government, but it is one that has been, uh, been mooted by a handful of private members. So we will see what the final outcome of it. But I'm, uh, my understanding from the recent discussion I had with the chairman of the committee, the substantial elements of the bill have already been modified as a result of the intervention of the attorney general. We will see what the final outcome is. No, honestly, I love his response. And let's be honest there. Eh? Let's be honest. We have so many issues in Nigeria, LGBTQ, eh? in Africa. LGBTQ, I do not think anyone really, really cares about what you do in your private room. I don't think anyone will want to know about what you do in your private room. I don't think so. And in Nigeria, LGBTQ community are going about their business very, very well. They are doing their stuff and nobody is condemning them. Nobody is bashing them for it. Honestly speaking, how many times have you seen gays in town walking around? I have seen so many times and I do not approach them. What's my business? They are already flourishing in, in Africa and in Nigeria. And also in Ghana, mostly in Ghana. 
They are flourishing over there. Well, um, moving past that, let's talk about uh, Dino Milai, who decided to call on uh, the president-elect, none other than the Bola Ahmed Tunubu. Let's hear what he has to say again. Um, Bola Ahmed Tunubu cannot be our president. And I also want to call on the judiciary that the judiciary cannot create a president for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A president will only be created by democratic due process through electionary processes. And anyone voted for a, a popular vote in this country will be the president of this country. Never will we allow the judiciary to create a president for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And a drug baron, a certified drug baron, cannot be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I'm using this opportunity to call on President Muhammad Buhari, who in 1985 sent his government, actually, sentenced three people to death, and they were indeed executed. They were indeed murdered. Three drug barons arrested during his regime in 1985 were summarily executed. They were killed by that government. So a man who executed drug barons and drug traffickers under his watch in 1985 will now, on May 29, hand over power, hand over the Federal Republic of Nigeria to a drug baron. It is time for Buhari to think, it is time for the Nigerian judiciary to think that a certified drug baron who has been indicted and money was deducted from his account to the tune of over $400,000, you can calculate that in error today. I uh, will want to say he want to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. No, a Pablo, an Escobar Pablo, cannot be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We say no to it, and we will continue to agitate. We will continue to ask questions. We will continue to protest. We will continue to agitate within legal means to prove a point that I mean, a drug baron cannot be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the battle to salvage this country from economic cankerworms and financial scavengers. This battle to make sure that Nigeria is not declared as the drug capital of the world. Already we are the poverty capital of the world. The battle to get that done is a battle of no retreat, no surrender. We will survive. We'll survive. Thank you. Uh, That's coming from Edino Melai. He said two things. So. He said drug barrel and... We cannot accept a president that a that, uh, judiciary will impose on us. So talking about that is talking about Peter Obi. Even if Peter Obi will go to court and uh, say, yes, the judiciary grant said that, uh, yes, it was the original winner of the election, that they will not still allow it. So it will be wrong. We might possibly be looking at it will be wrong. So guys, uh, tell me exactly how you feel about that. And uh, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay blessed. Peace.